Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new limited edition Puma Evo Speed HE. Now as you guys can see, this does come in a pretty cool, fairly fancy box. It's entirely made from plastic. The lid is solid white with Evo Speed branding in red there on the top. And then the bottom part of the box is translucent. You can see you have this white graphic that fades to being completely clear towards the bottom. Your Evo Speed logo, the Puma branding, and then you have this little symbol right here. That's the symbol for helium. It says Evo Speed HE FG in there. And the reason why it's called the Evo Speed HE is they're kind of implying with the helium symbol that they're so lightweight, they'll actually feel like they're floating. So. That's the, the reason behind the name. When you open the lid, you'll notice that the shoes actually float. Unfortunately, they're not actually floating. What's happening here is there's kind of a little, uh, I guess, mount attached to the underside of the lid. So when you pull them out of the box, they stick to the lid, which is kind of cool. Um, but this is a look at the shoes, the Evo Speed HE. A lot of people view this as kind of an F50, um, sorry, an Adidas 99 gram Adi Zero competitor. It really isn't. It's called the Evo Speed HE, but in all honesty, this is pretty much just a rebranded um, Puma Evo Speed 2 SL, which I will talk about and compare uh, in today's video. So stick around if you do want to learn more about this shoe in general. They definitely do look cool. I will give them that. This was a limited edition release that has now kind of completely sold out. Only 200 pairs worldwide. And when they were available, the retail price was $300 US. So if you are looking to get a pair of these now, unfortunately, your best bet is going to be in the resale market on eBay, for example, and you're likely to pay over the $300 retail price. So again, if you want a pair, probably not the best value to go buy them resale unless you really, really want them as a collector's item. But as a collector's item, I will say it is a pretty cool looking shoe. And again, we're gonna cover all the details in today's video. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around. And with that being said, let's get right into it. To start things off, let's take a look at the weight of the Evo Speed HE and see how it compares to the Evo Speed 2 SL, the kind of general release super lightweight offering from the Puma brand that as you can see side by side is more or less the exact same shoe and again we'll talk about the differences in just a second so i have a scale right here keep in mind that these are both the exact same size 9 us and they're both in brand new condition so this is a very fair comparison they even both still have the sticker there on the bottom letting you know that it's not going to be the most durable shoe in the world so we'll start off with the evo speed 2 sl you can see that they weigh in at an extremely lightweight 3.7 ounces, the equivalent of 105 grams. So very close to that 99 gram Adi Zero shoe. But again, this is a general release as opposed to a limited edition one. So we'll change the scale back to ounces, pull these off, and we'll throw on the Evo Speed HE. This is the right shoe. So I'm just weighing both right shoes, even though they are technically different colors. Not gonna impact the weight. You can see that they weigh in at 3.8 ounces, the equivalent of 107 grams. So these are actually two grams heavier than the Evo Speed 2 SLs, uh, which again, is very, very minor. That's down to basically variants in the actual manufacturing of the shoe as opposed to physical differences. Because like I mentioned, aside from some very minor things, these are identical shoes. This is just a limited edition release with a pretty cool colorway. Whereas again, if you want this shoe without paying the premium price, uh, you can get it in the form of the Evo Speed 2 SL, which retails for a high price, but you can find them on sale. Just know that this is, like I said, kind of just a rebranded Evo Speed 2 SL, as opposed to something that's entirely new or a concept shoe like we saw with the 99 gram Adi Zero. So as we kind of just covered, this is basically an Evo Speed 2 SL with a different name and a little bit of a different look. Now, what's impressive about the Evo Speed 2 SL is the fact that it is so light. You guys just saw that they're right around the 100 gram mark, which is absolutely incredible to wear. The experience of wearing a shoe this light and this thin it is pretty remarkable. It is the sensation of not wearing any shoes at all. And as far as light as they are, uh, they actually fit pretty well. 
Uh, they're not overly responsive, but they don't necessarily feel like they're uh, unsupportive in any way on your feet. And the traction that they provide is well above average considering other shoes that I've seen and worn in this particular weight range. So the traction pattern for firm natural grass really made for ideal playing conditions. Uh, it, it does work extremely well. Now, uh, the HE model, it has a translucent upper and then you get to see all the um, internal speed frame support system. This is exactly the same as what we had on, or what we currently have with the Evo Speed 2 SL that I have right here. And I removed the laces just so you can get a look at the inside. Those little kind of designs there, the actual internal support speed frame, that's what you're seeing uh, kind of externally on this shoe. It is still inside, but you see it because the main textile top layer is kind of completely translucent with white mesh. So it's a little bit easier to see uh, given that they used a darker kind of accent color. So it all pops out very, very cool. You see it to a certain extent on this shoe as well, but obviously they hide it a little bit more with colored graphics and logos across the entire upper. But the pattern itself is identical. So what you're getting with this shoe is a very, very thin textile upper. You can basically see right through it. Um, and it features that internal support frame in the form of this uh, kind of webbing, I guess is the best way to put it. That's again, just a very thin textile material that is positioned in such a way to obviously provide structure to what would otherwise be a pretty flimsy textile upper uh, in kind of all the spots where Puma deemed it's the most important to have that little bit of extra support. And again, while this shoe is not overly responsive, you're not gonna put this shoe on your feet and immediately feel like you're super, super locked in. It is effective in terms of just keeping your foot locked in place well enough to where the shoe doesn't feel flimsy or unsupportive in any way. Uh, but again, that's not really what the main flaw is with this particular shoe. We'll get to that in just a second. The touch on the ball, very, very good. Pretty much as close to barefoot as you're gonna get from anything else out there. Uh, it's super thin, there's no padding to it whatsoever. It feels like you're kicking a ball with no shoes at all, which is really, really nice. And the finish on the surface is for the most part completely smooth without being slick on the ball. So it doesn't feel grippy, it doesn't feel slippery either. It's kind of somewhere in between. Laces run through the middle, as you can very clearly see. It has a pretty standard design with a tongue. Uh, the tongue does have some backing material as well, as you can see on this particular pair, uh, where I have the laces removed. Uh, and then moving on to the heel area, it is still a low cut shoe. That's still the best way to make the lightest possible product, just because you don't have extra material. Um, and then we get to the durability aspect of the shoe, which is uh, kind of the downfall of, I guess, the Evo Speed HE and the whole Evo Speed SL concept since the Evo Speed SL1. Now we have the SL2. And what you're gonna find, and I have the sticker still on the shoe, is it reads this. And there is a typo in uh, the second sentence, which we'll get to in just a second. You guys will see it. Um, it says this, the Evo Speed SL is not for training days. It's for you, there's the typo. It's supposed to say your best days, your match days. It may only be used on real grass and in fair weather conditions. So like I said, this is not made for use on artificial grass. It's only made for firm natural grass playing surfaces and really playing surfaces that are very high quality. You want them to almost be verging on soft ground as opposed to more of a harder ground, just because this sole plate is very, very thin and the studs are fairly long. So they need to dig in in order for the uh, I guess traction to work well and for the overall experience to be comfortable on your feet. If you wear these on hard ground or an artificial grass, not only are they gonna tear up more quickly, they're gonna be very uncomfortable. You're gonna have issues with stud pressure. Uh, a non-compromised lightweight proposition, this product is about speed, not endurance, but the moments it creates will last forever. Now, when this shoe initially came out or the Evo Speed SL shoe initially came out, it came with uh, a lifespan expectancy of about 10 games. That was, that's what they estimated. And I'd say that's pretty accurate. The couple pairs that I wore uh, and broke lasted me about seven uses total. Uh, so again, that's kind of what you can expect out of these shoes. Obviously with the Evo Speed HE being a limited edition release, it's more so for collectors as opposed to people that are actually gonna wear them. Again, if you wanna wear them, you're, you're perfectly welcome to. There's no reason why you can. It is, like I said, just kind of a rebranded Evo Speed 2 SL. Uh, but just keep in mind that if you do buy a shoe from Puma of the Evo Speed SL lineup, uh, it's not going to be very durable at all. It's not gonna last very long. And there's pretty much nothing you can do to increase the lifespan of the shoe. Why does it actually break? 
It's just because the sole plate and the upper, they're so, so thin, it's really difficult to bond these two materials together. And when you make a shoe as light as 100 grams, they just break down more quickly. It's just how things work. So what, ha what does happen is the sole separates from the upper. Uh, you're unlikely to see a tear in the upper. I suppose it's entirely possible. But the three pairs that I did wear, basically it's sole separation. That, like I said, happened for me around seven uses or so. Uh, and then from there, you're pretty much on your own. You have to buy a new pair of shoes. There's no warranty for sole separation. This is something that you kind of buy with the expectation that it's not going to last very long. That's why they put the warning sticker on there. Moving on to the heel area, you do have an external heel counter. Uh, the sole plate itself is entirely made from a combination of p backs and nylon. Uh, so p backs for the main part of the sole plate. It's super thin, super, super flexible. There's pretty much nothing to break in with this particular shoe just because the sole plate is so flexible and the upper so thin. Uh, it just doesn't have any rigidity or any kind of firmness to it. So they're pretty comfortable out of the box. And again, because they don't last very long, you really wouldn't want to spend two or three uses of your 10 breaking them in. So they're pretty much good to go out of the box. Uh, it does have this uh, kind of stiffener bar running through the middle uh, just to provide a little bit of rigidity in the spots on the sole plate that you would obviously want it. It doesn't feel flimsy as thin and as flexible as it is, which I think is really good. Uh, and then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, you can see it has kind of a more standard six stud layout in the forefoot with two bladed studs at the base, one in the middle, very aggressive traction. Uh, I know it doesn't look like much, but it does actually grip in quite well when you are in a nice plane surface. And then at the back, you're gonna find that it does have a three stud layout, two bladed studs on the lateral side and one conical stud on the medial side. This feels honestly perfectly normal. There's nothing unstable about it. And the reasoning for the three stud design is mainly just to shave weight. Uh, one stud weighs less than two, so that's what they did. And like I said, it works really, really well. This is a very, very good stud pattern, again, given that you are on a nicer natural grass field. So that's pretty much it in terms of what you need to know in regards to performance with the Evo Speed HE. Again, it is a rebranded Evo Speed 2 SL, and it is a shoe that does have its flaws. But if you have a little bit of extra money to spend on a pair of these shoes, or you're just very, very curious, trust me when I say that the experience of wearing something this thin and this lightweight is different than anything you've worn before. And I personally think it's worth a go, again, if your budget allows for it. As far as the looks of the Evo Speed HE go, I think they look very, very good. Again, it's got the same general aesthetic as an Evo Speed 2 SL. What's different here is they went with a translucent polyurethane covering, a white textile mesh, and then kind of a brighter, darker accent color in the form of the internal speed frame support system, which is why you see it there from the outside. So the left shoe is black with the speed frame, black laces, black heel liner, and then has that red blast orange color for the outline of the Puma form stripe here on the lateral side, nothing on the medial side. And then the right shoe has a red blast liner, red blast laces, heel liner, and then of course you do have the uh, black Puma form stripe outline. Both shoes have a white sole plate with translucent studs and some translucent orange studs as well. So overall, I think they look very, very good. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Spider-Man for whatever reason. I guess it's just kind of the webbed look. Uh, but nonetheless, I think they look very, very cool. Let me know what you guys think though down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on feed portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Evo Speed HEs on foot. On my right foot, I have the stock red blast laces that come with the shoes. And on my left foot, I have a pair of white and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description, or there'll be a little pop-up on screen. So if you're interested, be sure to go ahead and check it out. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they are actually remarkably comfortable considering they're right at the 100 gram mark. Normally from a shoe like this, you'd expect them to feel very rigid, very plasticky, and just uncomfortable because of how thin everything is. And while everything does feel quite thin on this particular shoe, again, they're not uncomfortable. The upper, while it doesn't feel soft, it doesn't feel hard or kind of, I guess, crusty is the best way to, best word to use here. Um, it feels pretty flexible. It's basically, just enough material to fit nicely around your foot and to hold your foot on top of the sole plate base. 
that's the best way to describe it. There's no rigidity to it. There's no rubbing. There's nothing uncomfortable. There's nothing really to break in. They're pretty much good to go just because it is super, super thin. You, it's pretty much translucent. You can actually see some of the patterns on my sock, which is kind of funny, but at the same time is also kind of cool. Sole plate, super, super flexible. Again, super thin as well. So if you are on harder ground, even if you try these on in a store or something like that, you'll immediately notice that you can feel pretty much all the studs under your feet. So again, it is recommended that you use these on natural grass that is trending towards softer just because you need something for the studs to kind of dig in properly in order to not have any issues with stud pressure and general discomfort. But again, overall, the shoes are very comfortable for how light they actually are. As far as width is concerned, it's a tighter fitting shoe, but not overly tight. I would say that these will fit most people. Not really gonna break them in. You're not really gonna stretch them. They're basically gonna last for your 10 uses or so, and then kind of fall apart. So for, for the most part, they will fit most people. Um, you shouldn't have to worry too much about the width of the shoe. And as far as sizing is concerned, they run about a half size small, just like the other Evo Speed models. So instead of wearing my usual size 9 US, I bumped it up to a 9.5, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, this is it for my review of the Puma Evo Speed HE, the limited edition release. Again, if you guys are interested in a pair, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go into the resale market and pay above the $300 retail price because they did sell out everywhere on the release day. Uh, if you guys do want to see some high quality images though, you can check out the review page on my website uh, by either clicking the first link down below in the description or the little eye in the corner of the screen. Uh, if you have any questions at all regarding the shoe, leave them down below in the comment section and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.